Guys, guys, guys. Look, okay, I'm sorry. I don't mean to derail our podcast today, but you know, us heading down this path to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, it got my brain working. It gave me like a wild idea. So if you don't mind, I have a very big announcement today. I really, really like that. You, you too? Wow, so do I. Oh, okay, well, how about that? Sounds like today is going to be an epic episode. All right. Yes, it is. I wanted to wait until we were all on the air before I made this announcement. Same here. I honestly think that this decision could really shape the future of this podcast going forward. Plus, it'll be a really big deal for me and my family. Oh, so wait, are you guys moving? No, I'm not moving, but um, actually, you know what? We're getting off track, and I don't want to preempt your announcement, Tom. You sounded really excited, so you go ahead. Uh, no, 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 that's all right. That's all right. You go ahead. By all means, the floor is yours. And I, I have prepared a little something for mine, but, you know, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and go first. No, no, honestly, I really want to hear what you guys have to say first. I mean, I don't mean to be that guy, but mine is kind of important, so I'd really prefer to go last, if you guys don't mind. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Hello, my name is Dan. And I'm just your average run-of-the-mill American. And I work to feed my family, and I shop right beside you and yours. And I love this country. I come from a small town, and I know what it's like. I understand how hard it is. And I know how difficult it is to make any kind of impactful change. I want to be your voice, because I'm one of you. And that's why I've decided to run for office. And I do hope I can earn your vote. I'm Dan, and I approve this message. That was awesome, Dan. And you look so good in that suit. Super proud of you, man. Thanks. I've been thinking about it for a while now, and uh, my wife and daughter really support me too. So, Josh, uh, you uh, you know what? How about your announcement? Thanks, man. Can I go next? Are you tired? Are you frustrated? Does watching the news infuriate you more than inform you? Well, I am right there with you. And I will tell you what, I am angry. More importantly, I am angry enough to stand up and say enough. Like all of you, I am proud of my country, which is why I am running for office. When you vote, don't think about the politics. Think about your family. I want to be the change you want to see. I'm Josh. And I approve this message. Very impressive, dude. That's even better than the rough cut you showed me earlier. You looked all professional and done up. I mean, you even shaved. Well, you know me. I really appreciate it. Wait, wait, wait. You knew. Of course he did, Tom. You think that we'd make this kind of announcement without some input? Dan and I have been talking about this for the past few months. Yeah, I was talking to Josh about it, and this was a way that if one of us is elected, we'll fully support the other. And plus, we agreed that a little friendly competition amongst friends won't hurt. Ooh. So, Tom, what was uh, your announcement? Mm, I... It's not like you're running for office or anything. <laughs> yeah, because that would... Tom? I'm running for office. Really? Well, awesome. Um, I guess you you don't have anything prepared. You could say something now. I okay, I guess. I thought I was running unopposed. I'm Tom, and I approve this message. Can I just say I am really looking forward to running against you guys. We've been friends for so long. I think that it's definitely going to be fun. It's going to definitely be three level-headed guys having fun together, running for office. Right? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Not only are we taking Jaden Martell to Midnight Special America, but we're going to take Kirsten Dunst to Wag the Dog, and then Willie Nelson to Swing Vote, Dennis Hopper to Cool Hand Luke, George Kennedy to Flight of the Phoenix, then all the way to Jimmy Stewart to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Grab your tiny flags and hop on the bandwagon, because we're hitting the campaign trail. Join Dan, Tom, and Josh on their whistle-stop campaign trail. Shaking hands 
and kissing babies all the way to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington! Ask not what the fire pit can do for you, ask what you can do with the fire pit! What do you know about Alton Meyer? I wouldn't know where to start. He would have fits. Things would break. It was like a feeling. What kind of feeling? We need to know where he is. You all have no clue what you're dealing with, do you? I think you're a weapon. And the ranch thinks you're their savior. Dad, it's okay. My fellow American bots and listeners, it is with great honor and distinction that I welcome you to another episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and we are done with King Town, and we now embark upon a six-week campaign trail. The Fire Pit Whistle Stop Campaign Trail to Washington is underway, and our first stop is right here. And as per the rules, we've taken an actor actress from our last film and moved them on down to this one. And to give us a look at who we're watching and what we're watching, I turn the podium over to Josh. Thank you, esteemed senator from Ohio. I humbly accept this podium. Good evening, everyone. I'm Josh, British name Reginald. And last week, we got to wrap up the field trip to Kingtown, watching Jaden Martell and some other losers smack around a clown because uh, who wouldn't want to do that? But it might have been a little easier if he would have kept the powers he's going to be using in tonight's film, Midnight Special. The first film on our Whistle Stop Tour, because we're electing and representing everyone on the campaign trail. Ooh, 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 I like that slogan. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll tell you what, it's yours. Really? You know, honestly, I don't even feel a little bit bad about giving it to you. Me and Dan did kind of steal your thunder tonight. Oh, thanks, buddy. Electing and representing everyone on the campaign trail. I can see it on the posters now. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Well, uh, since I was about to send things over to you for the rundown, anyway, I guess podium is now yours, Thompson. (sighs) Power. I'm kidding. I'm going to go ahead and filibuster this now. (laughs) <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night. And denied, Daniel's... denied, denied. Thank oh, you, no, Josh. Thank book. you, thank you, thank you. Nope, nope, <laughs> thank you. Good evening, fellow voters and legislators and friends of democracy. Saluting you, I'm Tom, British name Thompson. And as Josh mentioned, we're watching a midnight special tonight, which might sound like a porn, but this is very much not. I hope none of us have seen us. This could be an awkward first stop on the whistle stop tour if our track record in the past is anything. So the release date for this film was March 18th, 2016 in the United Mm -hmm. States. The runtime is roughly about 112 minutes. The budget for this film was a pretty reasonable $18 million. And the box office was $6.7 million. Mm -hmm. This film opened at number 30, its opening weekend, premiering alongside Miracles from Heaven, which opened at number three, grossing almost $15 million, and Allegiant, which opened at number two, grossing $29 million, and both losing the number one spot, which went to Zootopia that weekend, which was on its third week of release at number one, grossing about $37 million. It was also its last time at number one that week. But wow, not bad, actually. Midnight Special never broke the top 10, but it did climb to the 14th on its fourth week of release. So I guess that's something. I I mean, it really didn't help that its widest release was in about 
521 theaters. Yeah, it didn't have much of a chance, to be honest, especially against the film that had a couple thousand theaters or something like that with Zootopia. I, I don't have those numbers in front of me, but yeah, didn't have much of a chance. Uh, have you guys seen the trailer for this film? I watched it right after we wrapped up the selection section show. Mm -hmm. Typically, if I haven't seen a film, I try to avoid uh, everything relating about it, with the exception of maybe the box office and the rundown numbers. Honestly, it's a good thing that um, Warner Brothers produced this film, because they would have sued their ass. This is a Superman film. We're looking at an elf's world. What if Superman was raised by not the Kents? Dan, did we watch that movie, like... Two years ago? Yeah, it was called Brightburn. <laughs> well, this one doesn't seem like it's going to have, like, crazy Superman killing people. So it'll be different like that. I've seen the trailer, and I've done a little research, so I have a little idea of what we're getting into. But what are your expectations, guys, especially considering our past track record with films we've never seen before? Nigel, I leave the floor to you. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. My expectations are basement level. Mostly because, one, our track record of us watching movies that all three of us haven't seen is not great. The only one we didn't viscerally hate was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, even, but we still didn't enjoy that one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not looking forward to this. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's, an, it's an indie film, so maybe I'm judging it too harshly. But looking how, how much money it didn't make, although it was up against some really stacked competition... But I don't know. I mean, it's got Adam Driver and Michael Shannon in it, and they're good actors. Mm -hmm. So maybe this movie will surprise me. And I actually did enjoy Jade Martell's performance in It when we watched it. And this is a year before that movie came out. Maybe I'll enjoy it, but I've been saying that since Swashbuckler. Like, oh, it's got actors I like in it. Maybe I'll enjoy it. And then, like, no, <laughs> I don't. Pathfinder had Carl Urban and Clancy Brown in it. And I love those two. And I'm like, still wanted that movie to end so badly. At the hour mark. And it didn't end. It dragged on and on and on. So what about you, Tom? What are your expectations for this film? Well, it's funny that you should mention Michael Shannon. Michael Shannon played Zod in the Man of Steel film. And this film, essentially, the plot looks to be like kid with superpowers. So in my head canon, this is, you know, the Elseworlds where General Zod raised Kal-El. At least that's how, it, how I'm playing it off. Honestly, the producer of this film, Sarah Green, her pedigree is a bunch of indie films. American Buffalo, Frida, Mud. The majority of these people all worked on Mud, which is like a Matthew McConaughey film. Jeff Nichols, he both wrote and directed this. He also directed Mud. Uh, so we got a consistent vision, like the writer-director vision. The mm -hmm. studio stayed out of the way. There was no drama behind this. This film actually only took 30 to 40 days to film, but there, it wasn't like it was a rushed production. It's like, yeah, we got it done. No drama. The actors and actresses are all stellar. Adam Driver, this was when he was still in Girls, but he was transitioning to film, so Hollywood was picking up what he was putting down. Honestly, looking at the history of this, everything that went into this, I'm thinking it's going to be a solid film. If anything, it's going to be not terrible. My overall expectation is... At the very least, I don't think I'm going to hate it, but we'll be glad I didn't pay full price to see it. The one thing I might not like is this director. I've seen, like, he did a short film or two that I checked out. He likes that realistic, shaky camera style. It's like, it's not full shaky cam, but it's still that, like, sway cam style. And I think I'm going to get tired of that pretty damn quick. But other than that, I think we might be okay with this one. Reginald, before I jinx us any further... What about you? What are your hopes, fears, and expectations? Well, I hope, like any time I watch a movie I have yet to see, that it won't entirely suck. But more often than not, I am, in fact, let down. Back in episode four, when we watched Pathfinder, that movie started off good. Granted, it went downhill almost as fast as they transitioned from forests to snow, literally like <laughs> five seconds. I mean, we ended up hating that movie to the point where we couldn't even focus on it. But yeah, going back to talking about movies that we all haven't seen, like I haven't even heard of this movie until I saw it come up on that list when I was picking uh, my movies for the selection section episode. It's like I read about it and like a kid with powers is pursued by the government. I guess that's mm -hmm. interesting. It's not election related or politically driven, but government, I, don't, I guess it'll work. And like I said, I don't like to uh, 
muddy the water, so to speak, especially on films I don't know about. So mm-hmm. I, I didn't read too much beyond the uh, summary or the whatever. I would have to say uh, one of my favorite superheroes is easily Superman. I liked Brightburn, but I acknowledge that it is not great. And I might just like it because it is kind of a Elseworlds type of Superman story. Mm-hmm. And I didn't anticipate anything to the effect of uh, Superman in this one until you mentioned it a minute ago there, Tom. But if it is, it could be fun. I mean, I always like subtle retellings of superhero films like mm-hmm. Chronicle. I liked Chronicle. I liked how that kind of brought a superhero origin and a villain origin story in with modern technology, I guess you could call it, because it was a found footage film. And I do agree that can get a little annoying. But yeah. um, I'm trying to think of another uh, low budget superhero film. I can't think of any right off the top of my head. Well, I can't think of anything that isn't like, you know, a subversion of the superhero one yeah. or just like a take that kind of film. This, this yeah. film, just from the vibe of it it does feel like it could just be a more realistic interpretation of what would really happen if superman showed up in our world mm. that, that's kind of the vibe i got from this adam driver plays the lois lane investigating it at least that's how i feel i'm not going to spoil too much yeah, more but... of that the trailer also spoiled probably the ending so good thing you didn't see it yeah but uh i, I would have to honestly say that if it is kind of a Superman type of story, or even at that effect, I just, I hate how recently, um, and this is kind of just a hate speech on DC, so edit this out if I get too ranty, but I hate what they've done to Superman in recent years. I don't like the dark Superman. Like, I think that he having dark elements is good, but Superman has always been, you know, a positive, a beacon of hope. I don't like seeing that muddied too much. Like, I acknowledge that some of the best Superman stories is when Superman has his dark face. Like, Red Sun, probably the best Superman comic book, bar none. And I liked Man of Steel, less so every time I watch it, but I see what they were going for. You know, that's just going on a Superman kick. Like, if they, even if he doesn't have superpowers, I'm interested to see the film. And I think the indie persuasion on this movie might mm-hmm. lend a bit to, you know, it's one of those things. We've talked about it before. Lower budget films can sometimes really flex that creative muscle. So I'm hoping that since this was a lower budget film um, and an indie film at that, that maybe uh, my, uh, my expectations aren't bottomed out. They aren't mm-hmm. high, but honestly, I'm hoping that I might enjoy this movie. Like to the point where I might be willing to watch it again or maybe even recommend it to somebody like, hey, if you haven't seen this, it's not terrible. But uh, I guess we'll see. I mean, we were all looking forward to Swashbuckler. So <laughs> 17 for those of you yeah. who need the number. If you listen to the first third of Swashbuckler. We were excited for that film. Like, I think all of our expectations was uh, this is going to be good. It's like I watched 10 minutes. It was great. The trailer sold me. Da, 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 you know, there's even a line in the episode where like we're 20 minutes in and I even say, I have to say, I know we're only like 20 minutes in, but it's not bad right now. It's not, I'm not having those, what have I got myself into thoughts? That comment did not age well. I mean, <laughs> five, five, ten minutes later is my iconic line. What is this movie? I think I even followed you up like, you're not having one of those, what have I got myself into thoughts yet. Yeah, and you were yes. dead on. You were dead on because within minutes, you just hear Tom say, "This is a very bizarrely paced film." Yes, yes. and it just got worse from there. But I, you know what? I, maybe I'm being a little too harsh on this film. It had a limited release. It was. It wasn't released nationwide. Well, it was, but not like it wasn't at the, the multiplex on ten theaters like you know Zootopia yeah. probably was. Mm-hmm. But. And it was a uh, spring release, which tend to lend to uh, sci-fi films they don't think are going to do that well. Yeah, so maybe I'm being a little too harsh on it. I mean, it does have an an 84, 85% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is much higher than the movies that we did hate. I mean, Swashbuckler was like an 11. Or no, Swashbuckler was something in the neighborhood of like a 20%, and Pathfinder was like a 10. So, I mean, this isn't as low as the movies we didn't like. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I will pleasantly enjoy this. Maybe I'll be surprised. I'm just saying my expectations just because of our track record 
on movies like this is in the basement. But I, I want to be wrong because I really do like the actors in this movie. Mm-hmm. I like Adam Driver. He's the best part of the new Star Wars trilogy yeah. because he's the only one trying. And he's also the only one that has any kind of a character that you can kind of get behind. And you, you can understand his motivations. You can understand his whole arc. So he's the best part of the new Star Wars trilogy. I really enjoy Michael Shannon. I mean, his Zod was okay in Man of Steel, but he was awesome on Boardwalk Empire. That's so, right, he was in that. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a great actor. And I liked him as Zod. I just, I mean, come on. Terrence Stamp was the original Zod. And it's it's really hard to follow <laughs> that up. But we're, we're tangenting into, we have, we're, this yeah. is, we're not watching Man of Steel tonight. We're watching Midnight Special. And I was just saying that Michael Shannon is a good actor. And so is Adam Driver. So is Joel Edgerton. Kirsten Dunst, I can't think of any performance she's ever been in that I, I didn't like. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. well, that's not, her, not fault. her fault. Yeah, it's not her fault. And, and there's Sam Shepard's in this movie too. And He's a friend of the channel because he was Chuck Yeager in The Right Stuff. He was also in Hunt for Red October. Oh, yeah, he was in Hunt for Red October Is this well, our first so. three, Pete? It might be. It might be. Uh, Chuck Yeager, he's breaking the sound barrier and breaking records on Fire Pit. Oh, I know. Nice. Chuck Yeager. I'm thinking uh, Alan Shepard. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not in Hunt for Red October. So, yeah, no, Sam Shepard is the actor. Alan Shepard was played by uh, uh, Stick from Daredevil. Is, but he was Chuck Yeager in The Right Stuff, so... Uh, he's a friend of the channel. So like I said, it's got some good actors and actresses in it. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. I'm just trying to temper my expectations just because of our track record of us going into a movie that all three of us haven't seen. It usually ends in disaster. Especially a superhero film. You'd think one of us would have at least heard about it. Yeah. I have never heard about this film until I pulled it up using my algorithm. That makes me a little trepidatious as I'm just like, never heard about it. Nobody out of our group has heard about it. And we're usually pretty... I don't want to say that we know everything, but I'd like to think that the three of us together can, you know, cover a lot of ground in terms of, yeah, I've heard of this. I haven't seen it type of thing, you know, yeah. even Tom. And I mean this in the most loving, respectful way possible. Tom is the biggest movie snob out of the three of us in the sense of that he's seen movies that we wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. Yeah. You know, unless we had to do it for this podcast. And, uh, <laughs> But, but like Tom has seen a lot of different types of movies. And even when we were rattling off these lists last week, even Tom never said, Ooh, I've heard of that. No one's heard of this. So this flew by everyone's radar. Well, I'm not going to lie. Just looking at the picture or like the poster for this and like the description of it, it sounded like a weird kind of indie thing. Like Adam Driver takes a kid with superpowers on a road trip and the kid's wearing this like weird goggle thing and looks like a, a blanket. I was thinking Martian Child or something weird and quirky, which I'm not going to lie, that's. I'm a mark for those kind of films. But the trailer itself also didn't really engender me. It was so generic. But that's the thing. Um, Going back to Swashbuckler, I was so excited going into Swashbuckler because of that trailer, and it lied to me. This trailer is just like, okay, I'll s- it's going to show in theater number five. I mean, I guess I'll go watch it if nothing else is happening. Oh, Zootopia! Oh, thank God there's something else. So that's the vibe this film gave yeah, well, me. You know, that's, uh, at least, but I, you know, I really wonder uh, what other people thought about this film. No, oh, you guys are in for a treat. This one, this one runs the gamut. So we're going to do our IMDb guess the uh, review game. And we're doing this because uh, we like doing it and we haven't heard any comments telling us to stop it. So if uh, <laughs> you don't want us to do this anymore, please join the discord and tell us to knock it off. And uh, we think we're a- original. Yeah, we'll tell you about the Discord at the end of our podcast tonight. But we think we're funny, and we think we're original. If you my don't like it... My mom says I'm funny. Yeah, my mom says I'm the funniest guy on this podcast. So uh, we're going to we're gonna do the IMDb game again. And same rules apply, that if Tom or Josh, Josh loses... Wins, yeah, if Josh loses, because, no, you know... No, that's the rule. Josh loses. Josh loses. <laughs> we'll just skip this section and go ahead and award it to Tom. Tom, you got trivia next week. Hey, Josh is the Browns of this podcast. Now that we've gone Super Bowl, he's don't get never that going there. No, uh, honestly, no. Cleveland's on a winning streak right now. If anything, Josh is the Cincinnati Bengals of this podcast right now. I don't get that yeah. oh, oh, God. I'm sorry, Josh. Yeah. Flashes of brilliance and comes oh so close, but still can't close it out. So, anywho, I'm going to read off five different reviews. 
I'm just going to do the full numbers this time, one through ten. I'm not going to say these are bad reviews or good reviews, but uh, I'm going to I'm trying to pick some of the most deceiving titles because I like those titles that make it sound like, oh, this might be a nine star review, and then no, it's three. Are we still doing the rules where double points if we get right on the money? Yeah, if you get right on the money, you get double points. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so here we go. Number one, a beautifully filmed movie. This is the title, right? Yeah, this is the title of the review. That's how I do it. I do the title or the last sentence. Thompson. Oh, no, God, no, no. I'm not taking... You're going to... I know what you're going to do. You're going to price this right, me. You're going to go one lower and you're going to get this. No, 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 no. You go first. I want to win. <laughs> um, I'm going to go... Say it one more time. A beautiful... Or no, there's no A. Beautifully filmed movie is the name of the title. Based off of what you said about deceptive stuff, I'm shooting for the moon here. I'm going to go four. Normally, these uh, titles, when they do it like that, they're just generic. This is good. So I'm actually going to say eight. Josh is closest. It's a six out of ten. Ah. Son of a bitch. Damn it, damn it, damn it. All right, all right, all right. Technically, we're both two away. Two hours. Uh, yeah. Okay. You guys ready for the next, next one? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Two hours on the fine balance of leaving or staying. I'm going to say four this time. I am going to go five. Tom is right on the money. It's a four. (laughs) (laughs) Boom! I'm not even going to argue the the distance on the last one. I got the last point. One to two. I'll let you have it. I'll let you have the last one. I'm not above giving you pity, Josh. I'm not above or below taking it. (laughs) (laughs) Good, but not special. Okay, let's say it at the same time, Josh. Three... Two, one. <laughs> Damn it! You didn't do it. No, I thought you were gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right, guys. Say, not a suicide pact. It's not a suicide pact. It's just trivia. So <laughs> the, the, title is, the title is good, but not special. That's a fiver. I'm gonna go six. Ooh, Josh, right on the money. It's a six. Yes. Son Josh, of a... Josh you know, regains I... the lead. I take back that pity vote. I no, fuck you, it's mine. I take back it. I, I already licked it. It's disgusting. <laughs> Nigel? It's got awkward. Hold on. <laughs> Here's the next review. Midnight Special is definitely special. <laughs> ah, your turn, Josh. God damn it. <laughs> um, Midnight Special is definitely special. Uh, three. I'm going to dick you over. I'm saying two. God, you both are way off. It's an eight out of ten. So technically, are... Josh gets the point because he's closer. Yes. Boo! <laughs> Josh Boo wins words. trivia. Josh gets to do whatever he wants for trivia next week. But until you guys say otherwise, we're probably just going to do this again. Boo words. Was that the fifth question? Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, even if Tom gets to the next one right on the money, he can't yeah. overtake you. So. No, wait, no. Yeah, cause Josh has four. I've got two. I could still do this. I could still come from behind and tie it up. No, one more question. One more. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Here we go. One more. Hmm. No, I have three. And you got four. No, questions. no, you've got four because you got oh, you got four. the second question or the third question right on the money. Oh, yeah, because yeah. I gave oh, you okay. that pity point. Yes. Duh, duh. Four. Something different. One. Two. <laughs> Josh gets the point. It's a ten. <laughs> it's a ten star <laughs> review. <laughs> I only prices right at him, so <laughs> I wasn't gonna risk it. So now I could have said like four or five, but I was like, nope, not even risking it too. <laughs> it's a ten star review. Josh with commanding win. Not only did I win, I spanked you. <laughs> I Reagan you in nineteen eighty. Just I saying. demand a recount. No, no this is rigged. Rigged. Oh, no, no. There's no, no hanging chads on this one. There will be no recounts. The people have spoken. And, well, technically, Josh was the only one that spoke. And uh, he won. So, And now I'm going to change everything. Probably not for the better from here on out. Nice going, Dan. <laughs> We're going to call it uh, Joshonomics. Hard veto. Play it Hard. out to where the person who has the most points gets more points and if you have lesser points you actually lose points josh let's not try to complicate this and i'm not saying let's not complicate this for the audience i don't want you to complicate this for the hosts i was (laughs) under the impression when we started this podcast there would be no math and now you're making me do math (laughs) 
I just want the people who pay most of the taxes to afford most of the points. That's what I meant to say. Points. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. But okay, whatever. You get Neither to do trivia next week, so you so you can do whatever you want. God damn right. I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to this whistle stop tour. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the whistle stop campaign trail as well. And like we were saying earlier in the week, Josh, a little friendly competition amongst friends never hurt anybody. I agree. I think this is going to be a great time. I'm excited. This is going to be fun, guys. And with that being said, I do have one final thing I want to say. Tom, play the music. My potential voters, welcome back to another primary episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and candidate, Tom. And I'm counting on your support this year to be your voice. This is just the first stop on our Whistle Stop campaign trail. And though we may have a long way to go with your help, we can be electing and representing everyone on our way to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Now, I can stand up here and tell you all the things you can expect if you vote for me this election, but how about I let one of our sponsors show you all that you can look forward to? The one where he got transported and he was all phasey and, and everyone hated him for it. That was freaking hilarious. It was. Why am I talking so weird? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I sound like a freaking chipmunk on speed. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but that's how you normally sound. But don't worry. I can fix this. There you go. Oh, like yeah, there we go. Back there to normal. Yeah, nice. Because of the power of my new PC I got from Rob's custom PCs, I'm able to do all of this amazing editing and tweaking for our podcast, such as... Tom, 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 Tom. You're always fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And also... You're the one that does editing magic. Rob has over 10 years experience in computers and will build a PC for any base or budget. Whether you want a gaming rig, media center, or you too want to have the power to edit an amazing podcast, you can get a hold of Rob at Rob's Custom PCs. You can find the link for Rob's Custom PCs Facebook page in the episode description at firepit.podbean.com. Give him a shout out, and you can also do this. Warning you. Yeah, seriously. Seriously. seriously, seriously. This is the last time. This isn't funny anymore, Tom. Seriously. Knock it off. Ultimate power. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. And if you want to lend your support to the fire pit or want to let your voice be heard, you can contact us at Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. That's Curtain Call Entertainment I N C at gmail.com. Just put in the subject line the topic of your email, whether it's for an ad, a question, a destination recommendation, or what it is you want to see from my administration. And just like every politician before, I promise that we will read it. I promise that we will totally get back to you about it once elected. And I solemnly promise to never actually do it once I am. And that email again is Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. But that sound means it's time to get this campaign trail back on track. And I thank you all for your support and for listening. And as always, good luck! And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Everybody's gone. It's just me. 
two white dudes driving a piece of shit car from the 70s. Yeah, they'll find them in no time. What do they think this is? Supernatural? I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna hide it from my brother for like three episodes, and then he's gonna get really angry at me. Yeah, even though he probably wouldn't have gotten so mad if I'd have just told him right when it happened. This is the CW and drama. (laughs) Gary, Michael Shannon said, shoot him. Everything I do is for Krypton, and that was it. You know, I just had a thought. What if this is just about two dads taking their son out from the midnight special meal and they're in like rural Kansas? And the reason that they're being followed is because, you know, it's Kansas. I'm so glad you ended that with two dads taking their son out to the midnight special meal. Not like the midnight special dance or the midnight special show. Those have different connotations. Dan, I am worried that's where your mind went. Well, we were worried that that's where your mind went, Josh. And now Kylo Ren has come from the First Order to yeah. lay down some, some yeah. discipline. This isn't Kylo Ren. This is Matt, the radar technician. Yeah. I heard Kylo Ren is shredded. I heard he has an eight-pack. He had that same look on his face. Hey, he's reading a Superman comic. <laughs> Put that away, son. <laughs> Dad, who's this guy? I don't know, some asshole. His dad was a dick. I bet. Give me the codex! What? Nothing. <laughs> Not a lot of happens in this film, does it? More has happened in 30 minutes than the entirety of Dead Calm. Fair point. That hey, seems he did everything for Krypton. Now you be quiet. Why do they always use the bad picture of me? Adam Driver is such a good actor. He had to act on screen that Lena Dunham was hot. Sure. Yeah. Don't you remember being a kid and bleeding out of all of your orifices? Eleven Everything would like a word. Okay, so he brought a satellite down on their heads. That's a that's another page out of Daddy's book. If uh, Zod loses the kid, is he going to scream out, I will find him? If he doesn't, I'm going to be pissed, and I'm going to lower the grade of this movie. The other aspect is uh, we got uh, Uncle Owen over there. Let's that's try right. kid with special abilities. That's right. He's, yeah. young, he's, he's young Uncle Owen at the very... Yeah. So, so young Uncle Owen and General Zod raise a kid together. While they're running away from Kylo Ren. Wow, this is like really bad fan fiction. Bad or great? Yeah, he's still doing everything for Krypton, though. I do like they didn't give him some kind of obvious name, like Jeffrey Carbon or something <laughs> like that. Or Joe Coffee. Yes, I'm digging on you, Green Mile. More well, they could have named him Joshua, because you know Joshua is actually the... And that's what would have been a great reason to name him Joshua. I mean, seriously. Last warning. Uh-oh. Everything I do is for Krypton. <laughs> All right, mute Dan. Well, he's a lousy shot. Ow! He's not so lousy a shot. Superman music plays. Vision of jor comes. So he's going to take him out into the sun. Mm. He's going to, like, shine really, really bright. And then you're not going to be able to see him. And then it's, the light's going to go down. And now it's going to walk out a beautiful Henry Cavill. bum ba da bum God, if he sparkles, I'm going to just stop the movie and go upstairs and go to bed. <laughs> okay, so I missed a thing. So Jesus is giving the sermon in the hotel. Sick. No, he was showing the light in his hand and he was saying that he sees a dome and people live under the dome or something like that. And he thinks that people are like him and... Then General Zod was like, we saw it today. And he nodded. And now I, I missed the rest of the dialogue. I think they're going to go fight Pennywise or something. Actually, I think somebody or Doc Ock's on his way to kidnap Mary Jane. And Uncle Owen is going to go retire to the planet of Tatooine with Aunt Beru. And he does everything for Krypton. <laughs> Take a drink. One of the Law & Order shows, I think it's SVU, has a Nancy Grace pastiche in the show. And that character isn't as annoying as the real Nancy Grace. Oh, God, she just screams, punch me. She does, doesn't she? She is the personification of every Karen who ever wanted to see a manager, ever. God, I'd walk right up to those two boys, and I would be like, now listen, I want you to give me that boy, and I don't want any lip. If I get one word of sass, I'm going to have to see your manager. And that's it. That's it. I want to see your manager. Well, when you say it the fourth time, I guess. Well, you heard it. You said, Dad. Then, dramatic pause. 
I have to. I know you had to kiss Lena Dunham, but a couple years later you get to kiss Daisy Ridley. So it's okay. It works out in the end. Kylo, 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 Kylo. Damn it. I will find him. No, for a movie named Midnight Special, they have yet to go to a Denny's. Again, Tom, we're not watching a horror film. You can waste time with your friends later. If I don't get those <laughs> things fixed on the Southern Ridge, they'll be hell to pay. I don't. I didn't remember the whole quote. You tried your best, Josh. You tried and you failed. So the moral of the story is don't try. Everything I do, I do for Krypton. Not my it. turn now. <laughs> you even said, God damn it, Dan. So that Prius owner is going to be like, my car just up and left. It turned itself on and it drove away. I swear to God, you Prius owners are so fucking pretentious. No, seriously, officer. The Prius just started and drove off. Sure it did, sir. We'll get back to you, okay? We're going to go downtown and we're going to make this a priority, okay? We'll we'll get to the bottom of this. Fucking hippie. Why are we meeting out here? So the gators eat the bodies? I am Iron Man. Wrong movie, kid. Oh, damn, sorry, my bad. He found the Bat Cave. Great, that's another Florida Man headline. Florida Man explodes in a nearby bog. Anal probes. Well, he I'm just the... said, we won't find him. <laughs> Dan, nothing? Really? Nope. Not giving you the satisfaction. But everything he does, he does for Krypton. Don't fuck up the ending. 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 It's Krypton. No. They're in Florida, dude. It's Disney World. This is very Terminator 2. I was thinking the same thing. That, you know, dun, 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 dun. Now our path is clear. For the first time, I can't see the future. And that makes me happy. I don't know if I should tell you about your father. He will find you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael Shannon, for being in this film. <laughs> and now, back to the episode. Oh, thank you. I was so afraid they were going to do something else. I was hoping that was the end. Holy crap, I think I like that movie. I know, right? It's actually not bad. Not bad at all. Nigel? Okay. No, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Holy shit, is this the first time we've all gone into a movie blind and actually came out the other end and then liked the damn thing? Yes, I, the closest we would got before was we didn't hate scary, scary stories, stories to tell we just didn't like it um i think all three of us walked away from that one kind of acknowledging that it wasn't our cup of tea um, it wasn't the worst thing we've seen it was definitely the best out of the four movies that we hadn't all gone in and blind yeah but we're not swashbuckler or uh, dead calm where we're like oh my god this is the fifth movie we've gone into blind since we started this podcast and it's the first movie we all liked. Holy crap. Okay. Um, I know, right? It only took my internet going down five times and us having some audio difficulties for the first 10 or 12 minutes. But we did it, guys. The curse is lifted. The we fifth, finally watched... Fifth blind movie and our mm. 500th download on yes. our 27th episode. This has been a magical day indeed. All right, so I think it's my turn to do the rundown. So, our movie starts with a bunch of dudes, Michael Shannon and Joel Edgerton, or General Zod and Uncle Owen for those out there, taking Jaden Martell on a rather interesting road trip. Along the way, they run into a cop, literally, nearly kill him, because what kind of road trip with a kid would be complete without trying to kill a cop? In the meanwhile, Kylo Ren, Adam Driver, who works for the NSA, is interviewing a bunch of members of a Christian cult. Turns out that this kid belonged to that cult, and he has the power to read secret government stuff and whatever the government's interested. He's been telling them coordinates. And it turns out Michael Shannon and Joel Edgerton, along with Kirsten Dunst later on, try are trying to get him to those coordinates because they've seen into his eyes, and those eyes are magical. Literally, he blows things up with his eyes, but it doesn't kill him. It's interesting. Along the way, the church winds up finding them and trying to kidnap the kid again, but the government gets a hold of him. Adam Driver breaks him out, gives him back to Michael Shannon and Joel Edgerton. They take him to a swamp in New Orleans, possibly Florida, and it turns out the kid's powers, he's not Superman, he's a human portal kid, and he brings Tomorrowland 
to Orlando and the aliens from contact show up and they take him back and the city disappears. He goes back with them and it ends with most of the characters in a military prison and Kirsten Dunst getting a nice haircut and Adam Driver, well, Adam Drivering. The end. How was that? Pretty succinct? Very Uh, succinct. I was actually thinking the very word succinct as you uh, right before you said it. Succinct. I'm succinctly succinct. Sexually succinct in... Okay, I'm done with that. Yes. Oh, I am done. So who wants to give their uh, thoughts first? Nigel, you want to go first? Yeah, sure, I'll go first. Um, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I don't know if it was that good or it's because I went in with such bottom expectations that I'm like a mediocre, passable film kind of makes me go, eh, not bad. Mm -hmm. But um, I enjoyed it. You know, the story was uh, pretty easy to follow. Although it, it was easy to follow if you're paying attention. Um, yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if, if you walked away without pausing the movie or you looked at your phone or, or somebody distracted you with conversation and you weren't like at least reading the subtitles from the dialogue, you, know, you can get lost pretty quick. Because this movie doesn't hold your hand and answer a bunch of questions for you. It kind of makes you pay attention to it so that you can kind of piece together what's going on. I'm still not quite sure on the ending. I'm kind of letting that digest. It kind of felt a little (laughs) E.T.-ish. Or even, I think you mentioned in the summary, uh, uh, Contact. But at least we didn't watch three and a half hours to find out it was her goddamn father. So I'm okay with that. But yeah, I... I enjoyed it. Speaking of E.T., I thought I kind of got some E.T. vibes from this movie and some close encounters of the third kind vibes from this movie. And that's not a bad thing. Those are two really good movies. So mm-hmm. I guess if you're going to want to emulate something, you might want to emulate those. That's perfectly fine. I mean, you know, when we watched Explorers, Explorers had a lot of E.T. vibes to it. But overall, it was a good movie. It's got an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it seems about right. I might make it an 80 if I was grading it. I'd make it like a solid B. But yeah, it was good. Yeah. Going back to like some of the earlier films that we commented on, in particular like Jaws. Oh, what's another? Uh, Stand by Me. Uh, I made specific comments on the simplicity of the plot in those movies and how because of the plot was simple, it gave it a chance to really develop the characters. I felt like this was an example in that the the plot itself wasn't that complex. It was go from point A to point B. That's what you're trying to do. There's a lot of shit that happens in the middle. I really liked how it didn't hold your hand. I got to agree with Nigel on that aspect. And it didn't it didn't have to do any unnecessary exposition and specifically tell you it's like, "Okay, well look, he's got this power, so we're going to lay it out scientifically and mathematically for you." And we're just really going to tell the audience exactly what's going on at every step of the way. I really liked that it didn't do that. I like that uh, it left a lot to the imagination of us as the audience being like, oh, okay, what's this happening? I think this is what's happening. Cause, I mean, there was even that one point right before they went into the bat cave where we're just kind of like, okay, well, I think this is what's happening. And we had slightly different ideas about what was going on. And I like that about this movie. Now, the ending, the one thing I was so worried about was that the movie was going to end on such a stupid note like he was an angel or some shit. Like, you guys heard me say that. I'm really glad I wasn't disappointed in the ending. Do I think it was the best ending ever? Probably not. I I don't have any creative input for it, but I think the ending could have been done different, but it could have been done much, much worse. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to say in terms of endings, I thought it fit the film really well. It definitely didn't give you any answers that you had to have. So if you're expecting to watch this film and ask all these questions while you're watching it and get these answers at the end, you're not going to get that. I liked the indie because it definitely told you, it's like, look, there's something else going on here. But it's not like, oh, this is a portal to another dimension or these are aliens or you have no idea. You just know something epic and grand is happening, mm-hmm. but you don't know what. Like if that actually happened in real life, nobody would know. Everybody would be like, what the fuck is this? You don't know. So it kind of gives you that emotional feeling that I guess the characters in the movie would feel in that situation. You have no idea what's going on. You have a better idea as the audience because Kirsten Stewart was the audience surrogate in this one. I know I'm stealing your term there, Thompson. <laughs> it's but, Kirsten uh, Dunst. So, so, Dunst. Allow Durst? me to... You, you said... I can't remember what you said, but you were wrong, so allow me to deflate you a no, little. I, I think said, you said... Uh, I think you said Kristen Stewart, who's Twilight Girl. Um, I know I said but, Kirsten, I thought I said right now, whatever. Mm-hmm. So nobody else in uh, the movie, the character-wise, from their perspective, saw what she saw except for us, the audience, and her. Mm-hmm. And I really liked how they played that off. But beyond that, you know, it's like I have to say I loved the final scene of the uh, movie 
it's like you got a little bit of that interrogation with Uncle Owen and uh, Kylo Ren, mm -hmm. but you didn't hear anything about his dad, General Zod. It's just he's there. He gets the sun in his face. You see the parallels. And uh, cut to credits. I just thought that was awesome. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you for doing that with the credits. I don't need any unnecessary closure in this movie. I like how vague the ending was. I thought it very well suited the theme of the film. Because it's like, what did they show in the eye thing that he was doing to their faces? They don't know. They just know that it was something awesome that people wanted. Uh, what was his other powers? We don't know. This, he can hear radio waves and he can intercept encrypted comms from the government. He can pull satellites from the skies. But it's never laid out. It's vague, and I love that the ending was also vague, and I thought that that was just the cherry on the top. I just I like the movie. Like I'd have to agree with Nigel. I'd have to say that it's probably a good B B plus movie. No, no B B minus. I'd have to say B B minus, like low eights. It's not the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I could see myself recommending this. It met my expectations at a minimum. Mm -hmm. I could see myself saying, hey, yeah, that wasn't that bad of a movie. You ought to check it out. Mm -hmm. Instead of going like, that was crap, avoid it at all costs. I'm like, I liked it. It wasn't terrible. And honestly, I agree with both of your thoughts on this. It was a very meticulous film, like Nigel said. Uh, very purposeful in its pacing. You really couldn't be distracted. If you did, you would lose momentum but it was building towards something and like you said josh the ending was solid it was distinct but still enough it, it wasn't one of those things where they just bullshitted their way and left it open to interpretation my additions to both of your thoughts on this is this is a film that's been told before and as you guys have said they this was a stretched out plot this could have been an easily a 10 minute film 15 minute film and they stretched it to two hours the ending was just it's it's essentially the ending to close encounters or return to witch mountain or any of those where they're leading to an alien uh only they did this one in a far more novel way i'll give them that one it was like oh shit i was not expecting that well done I know I said I was worried about the directing style of this. The guy, at least in the short film I saw he did, it was kind of like a wobbly cam. I'm glad it wasn't. I'm glad it was very stable. He had a low budget, and he made use of it. He worked within the limitations. He, he didn't get too ambitious, with the exception of like the big ending. I'm not going to spoil it too much for the listeners here. And a few things. It was pretty practical. I give my props to him and his team. They did a great job. The acting was great. Adam Driver, you definitely could tell he was coming from experience as more of a comedic character because just the facial expressions and timing. But then at the same time, his character was kind of a nerdy NSA fellow. He wasn't supposed to be super serious NSA guy. So it would fit. Everything, this worked very well. I see what everyone else sees in this film on the internet, 8.5. This is definitely a middle-run film. You know, it premieres in theater number five rather than screen number one. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I'd be okay with watching it again, especially so I could see what else I could catch. I got that vibe watching the movie that this this is a movie that benefits from two or Multiple three viewings. viewings. Yeah. 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 It's also kind of upper middle road. I'm not going to seek it out. It's yeah. if it's always like I'll watch it, I'll recommend it to people. It's like I watch. It's a pretty good film, but it's not like oh my gosh, you need to see this film. No. That's not a battle, especially with our track record, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this uh, is out of the five movies we've gone into blind. This is the only one we've enjoyed. Yeah, exactly. Did you want to talk about the uh, pacing of the movie, Tom? I know you said you had notes on it, and I didn't cover any of that in my uh, final thoughts. Oh, well, you, you and Nigel did kind of cover it a bit. I, I meant specifically, like, it didn't have any areas that was too long without something happening. Uh, it's. I would say it's actually a point against the film, just especially in the beginning, which I get. It was trying to build suspense. But yeah, there was just a lot of scenes where people were just sitting. There's a TV on in the background, sitting and talking, sitting and talking, sitting See, and talking. Felt that, I felt that too, but honestly, I, would, I feel like there's movies that would really, really stretch that on. Because we were, what, 45 minutes into it, and I would say two maybe three things happened at least it's like they were spread out enough to where right as you were on the edge of starting to lose uh it was losing your attention 
something exciting happened that drew you back in. The one scene at the gas station, just as a prime example, it's like, okay, yeah, this is a, oh, shit, things are happening. Yeah. Oh, wow. Or, or the one scene when the house starts shaking, you're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Zod's like, I will find him. And he runs to the back, and then he sees, you know, the laser vision eyes thing. You're like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> and additions, um, just uh, as we've said before, praise to General Zod for being in this film. <laughs> it made our watch experience, for sure. <laughs> yes, Michael Shannon in this movie was good he's he's a good actor and his performance in this was pretty good i was gonna say i was really happy that there wasn't a scene in this film and i kept expecting it i honest to god was expecting it at any point especially when they would go back to either the government installations or they'd go back to the fbi agents or the nsa agents talking i expected at any point in this film for one character to come in and have a, a five to ten minute scene of just exposition to explain what this boy is what he does, why he's so dangerous, why we need to find him, this, that, and the other. And they never did. They never had a single character come in and explain to you what this kid really is. Is he an alien? Does he have special psychic powers? Is he some kind of a government experimented cloned weapon or something like that? No, they don't tell you what he is. And it's implied that the government knows, or at least suspects, but they don't ever right come out and tell you. And I like that. I really like that they didn't just come out and say, yeah, this is why we need to find this kid because he's a clone or he's whatever. Hats off to the storytellers and the director for no needless exposition. Just yeah. let the audience enjoy the story and be just as in the dark as the characters might be, you know? Yeah. yeah we just like, don't treat it. us like we're stupid. I mean, well, give us at least a little bit of freedom of imagination. It's certainly implied in the movie that the government might know who he is, or at least they suspect. And it's also implied in the movie that Michael Shannon knows more about him than he lets on. Mm-hmm. Like well, he, they, they heavily imply that when they, you know, laser vision with him, that he's showing them something beautiful and that it's amazing. But they never tell you what it is. So, like, what the hell is it, that world that was shown at the end? I mean, but that's the nice thing about it is it didn't need to, and it shouldn't have told you what it was. Mm -hmm. We discovered as everyone else was discovering. We were on the journey with everyone else. Yeah, I agree with you both. It's refreshing. Yeah, it was really nice to just watch a movie where you're not having your hand held every five minutes with with another character explaining another bump. You know, explaining again who this kid is, what he does, or or who Michael Shannon's character is, or any of that stuff. There's there's no needless exposition, or there's no pointless exposition. You know, I mean, in the back of my head, I'm, I was kind of wondering, like, who is this kid? You know, why does he have these powers or whatever? But by the time it got to the end, I didn't really care. You know, I was just kind of wanting, I was just along for the ride. That's a, that's a beautiful example. Like, you start with all these questions. Who is this kid? What are these powers? What does he do? What does the government want with him? But by the end of it, it's like, they, that's, a, that's such a beauty in storytelling from their aspect of the storyteller in this one, is that exactly like you said, by the end of the story, that didn't matter. And also props to the um, composition, whoever they got to compose. The music was just right. There wasn't like weird, like super action-y stuff or anything else. It just, it worked. That very simple track. For a, a fairly simple film, everything fit together nicely. Now, I know in the past we've seen films that maybe we've liked, but they, we, our opinions have faded. In like another couple of days, do you think you're you're going to look back on the film and like, wow, this was a really good film after all? Or do you think that opinion's going to like, eh, maybe it wasn't so good after all? How do you think the long term on this is going to be? I would have to say that maybe, because I'm thinking about certain scenes, like the whole thing with the church. I'm thinking about that. I was like, was that really necessary? I'm honestly thinking it's going to be one of those ones that it's going to like uh, ferment. But I don't think it's going to be one of those movies you could dissect like uh, The Big Lebowski and be like... Oh, look, he does this in this scene, and then that's the next scene following up is where he dies type thing. I don't think this has that deep of layers to it. I mean, I could be completely off base here. I I don't want to say it was shallow because I think that would be a disservice to the film, Mm. but I don't think it was very deep. Oh, definitely not. No. But Uh, again, like I said, I don't want to call it a shallow film, but it's definitely not a very deep film. No, but but I did like the fact that it's it's not a shallow film, it's not a deep film, but it's not a pretentious film. Yeah, this film did not try to act like it was deeper than it really is. Like, yeah, it's an indie film. It's an indie film, and I know maybe some people in our audience, you know, you hear the word indie film, and you do think pretentious uh, film with black and white French films with subtitles or something like that. No, this isn't like that. This is not a film that's going to make you know people say, "Oh, I heard this won all the awards at cons." It, it, no, it didn't. It's not yeah. it's not that kind of film. But 
it was a good enough film for what it was. It, it doesn't act like it's more than it is. And that's what I really respect about it. It was a good movie. It told a good story and it didn't try to be more than what it was. Apparently Warner Brothers just funded this movie, like Tom said, while we were watching it because it was dropping the bucket to them. It only cost like $16 million to make or something like that, which, I mean, Warner Brothers money, the only company bigger than them is Disney. So I think it's perfectly fine for what it was. I, that's what I really like about this movie is that it's it, like Josh said, it's not a shallow movie, but it's also not a super deep movie. It was just a good movie with some good actors and told a good story. And to add to that too, like we we worried as we were going on, like the religious, like is this going to be an angel? Is this supposed to be Jesus? It didn't browbeat you with the reli- any religious subtext. There were a couple things about comic books and like you know Superman and all that, some such, <laughs> which was its nice little uh, tongue in cheek and also kind of a nice little you know, prod against uh, General Zod there. Apparently there was, uh, I missed it, but I was formulating final thoughts as the credits were rolling. I finally looked at the uh, Wikipedia page for this, just so I can get the actors' names. By the way, Tom, the music is done by a guy named David Wingo. Okay. He said the score was good. But I was looking, uh, there's a reference to, um, uh, Adam Driver mentions um, uh, Red Saber in the movie. He mentions like a a, a special ops group or something like that. Uh, a government a government code word called Red Saber. Mm-hmm. And that was added into the movie because two or three days into filming, Adam Driver got the phone call that he was going to be Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens. Oh, so wow. they added so Red this, Saber into the movie to allude to the fact that he'll be Kylo Ren, you know. In so the this was filmed before he shot uh, The Force Awakens, but released after? Yeah, I've capitalized on the fact that, you know, they got Kylo Ren in it. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, and, and apparently both... That was in that that whole Superman conversation was specifically written into the movie because of Michael Shannon. He because that's why he's the one that says when they're asked about kryptonite, he says it's not real, it's made up. So it was more for Michael Shannon and less. Well, it was it was definitely a wink at the audience. You know, it's it, it, it there's a trope for it. It's called actor illusion, and, and I liked it. I liked how it was a subtle wink to the audience, not a beat you over the head. Look, this guy was Zod. We were doing that. You know, we were doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no, yeah. really, no way. I didn't. <laughs> I hey, didn't think that we were that obvious. He Come did on. everything for Krypton. But... <laughs> Take a drink, listeners. <laughs> but back to my original thoughts. I was just saying that, yeah, it was it was just a really good film that just told a good story with some good actors in it. And I love that about it. I don't know. I just, I, I'm repeating myself now. So yeah. Yeah. All right, let... well, that's it for tonight's episode then. Thank you very much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week as the train takes us to the next stop on the Whistle Stop campaign trail. Remember that you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google, or wherever you prefer to download and get podcasts. And be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast as it really helps our channel grow. And if you'd like to interact with us, please join our Discord channel. You can find a link on the episode description at firepit.podbean.com. So join the Discord discuss the episodes and you can suggest paths for us to take or just let us know on how we're very wrong and absolutely everything we also finally set up uh, twitter so we're getting into the social medias so hit us up at fire pit cce on twitter and uh we'll start using it soon it's it's fresh out the package for us yeah we literally set it up like yesterday yeah there'll be a link to the twitter also in the episode description on the podbean site yes and maybe i'll put a link on the web page so just keep a lookout for it we like having comments no matter what means you give them to us yeah we appreciate the feedback yes and i would like to give a special shout out to our two newest discord members Tyrick thorne as you heard in our selection section number four and some guy named rob i have no idea who that is i heard he uh, builds computers though yeah he just he joined too so hi to you guys and uh, also hi to my parents they actually listened to the last week's episode my mother says that we cuss way too much oh f- yeah that was i was like thank you mom i expected no less thanks mrs josh's mom <laughs> and i'll give a special shout out to peggy the og friend of the channel uh, always happy to have you along, always happy to listen, and I always appreciate your feedback. Also, uh, I don't know when she might start listening, but special shout out to my mom, who says she might actually listen to a few of our episodes because she likes a lot of the movies on this next tour, especially Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. That, that's like in her top two favorite movies of all time. And Jimmy Stewart was her, her crush when she was a girl. 
That's awesome. And from my end, I just want to shout out to all our listeners, current and new. Uh, thank you for finding this podcast, listening along with us. Hopefully you've been enjoying it. For those that are coming back from the future, welcome. We hope to keep doing this for you and you know, hope you keep following along. Well, I guess that wraps up this episode, guys, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So where so, are we going to next, Josh? Well, tune in next week as we follow Kirsten Dunst and watch her wag the dog. Uh, Josh? That sounds kind of bad out of context there, bud. That's the movie we're watching. Anyways, tune in next week. And until then, I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. And I've been Tom. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. He's still doing everything for Krypton, though.